You get to have it all and be it all without doing it all alone. That you get to live the life of your dreams, that you get to create the life of your dreams, the relationships of your dreams, but you don't have to bear the weight of doing it all alone. I think it's important, especially on the journey of healing the hustle and really coming back to your truth that you learn to ask for support and guidance and mentorship along the way so that you have that support system to hold you in your creations. Welcome my guest, Echo Summerhill. She is a multi-dimensional guide here on a mission to help raise the consciousness of this planet and usher into the new earth one soul at a time. She is the creatrix of Soul Up and the Soul Up Movement, which is an international spiritual awakening and group coaching community where she guides women on their healing paths to true mind, body, soul, and business alignment. A divine feminine leader, Echo mentors high achieving women in building their empires without the hustle and burnout. She focuses on helping her clients create a legacy that they are proud of from a soul aligned place for massive expansion. Echo is a master at guiding women through unblocking limiting beliefs and helping them achieve their superpowers and magic so they can elevate their lives, businesses to new heights of expansion. My guest today that I have a sty. So if you are watching me on YouTube, maybe you notice my eyes are a little swollen. It's pretty ridiculous, but we don't stop. We keep on going. And you know, this episode I know will be truly powerful. So, anyways, I'm welcoming on the my guest today, Echo Summer Hill. Beautiful, beautiful, different name. Yes. Welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm so excited and honored to have this conversation with you. Absolutely. So Let's just kick it off. I want to hear your story. So what has led you or been the catalyst for you helping women today as you talk about healing the hustle and becoming in soul alignment? What has been the catalyst that brought you to want to share that with other women? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I grew up in a very abusive, like traumatic upbringing. You know, I endured a lot of abuse as a child and even through my twenties. And, but from my younger years and during, you know, traumatic experiences and abuse, I learned to be very independent, very fast. And I learned how to get things done on my own. And that programming, you know, followed me through my life. And so when I became of age, um, to start working at 14, I started working full time and going to school. And then I wanted to get out of my house situation. So I graduated high school at 16 and then just went into work, 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 because it's all I knew was to work and to really, you know, in hindsight, seeking that approval from the world, seeking that validation from the world that I never really got growing up, you know? And so I, I programmed myself really early on to be super independent, like super hard worker, super hustle mentality, just go, 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 do, do, do whatever it took to make the money and, and to buy the shiny things and to feel the love from the world, right? All the external validation. And when I was 33, I made my first million and I looked around and I was the unhappiest and unhealthiest I'd ever been in my life. And I was like, if this is what success is, <laughs> then I don't, I don't want it. And that's when my spiritual awakening happened. And that was almost five years or over five years ago at this point. And that is when I had to really look at myself and I was drinking too much. I was diagnosed with neurological Lyme disease. I was overweight. I was unhappy. I was anxious. I was depressed, like all this stuff. And it was because I was just, you know, burning the candle at both ends. I, I didn't know how to take care of myself in a, in a proper way. I didn't know how to love myself. I was just always seeking the next shiny thing. And so five years ago, when I had my spiritual awakening, I was, I was pretty much forced at that point because I had been ignoring the signs like a lot of us do, right? To slow down, to look at the inside of what's going on. And I was forced at that point um, through my awakening to look at everything, to look at what really mattered to me and, and what was of value to me. And it really just rocked my world. And I just let everything kind of crumble and 
had to start really diving into the inner work. And so everything changed for me five years ago. Wow. I mean, I'm sure a lot of women or men listening to this could relate to being in that season one time of their life, whether it be you're working for somebody else or you're working for yourself. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mm -hmm. There is a season of hustle, but some people live that season year in, year out, right? And so we all have experienced burnout one time or the other. I know that women entrepreneurs, especially because you know, we operate in our masculine when we're in the hustle, when we're doing the things. And it's very easy to get really burnt out in that season. But do you believe there is a season for hustle? Because when you're building things, so actually, if you could touch on before I get into that question, mm-hmm. if you could touch on what were you going after? What were what were you doing at this time that was really where you were burning the candle at both ends? Yeah. So I had my son when I was, well, the month before I turned 30 and my husband, when I was six months postpartum and my husband had actually become injured on the job. He's a career firefighter and now a men's empowerment coach, but he was career firefighter, broke both his legs on the job. And he was unlawfully terminated from that department through that. And I, at six months postpartum, I had put my coaching business to the side. I had put my social media agency to the side and I was just in mommy mode. But when all of that happened and his finances went away, I was scared. I was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And so I was desperately seeking something. And at that time, I had a friend that saw that I was in this despair. You know, she saw the mental anguish and, and you know, emotional anguish that I was in. And she introduced me to a product through a network marketing company. And I was immediately like, okay, I love these products because they help me feel calm and they just bring some joy to my life, but I'm not doing the business. And I was like, I'm not doing the business. Well, you know how that goes. So I started to share and I actually started to do the business because I, I knew I could do it my way, which was, you know, no salesy, pushy BS, all of that. But I immediately went into hustle. I immediately was like, I've got to provide for my family and I've got to do whatever it takes. So I was hustling and grinding and, and it paid off, you know, at 33, we hit the top rank in the company and, and, you know, made all the money, did all the things, but I was again, unhappy, unhealthy. And so I had sacrificed so much in that time. I look back and I don't have any regrets, but in hindsight, I would have done things so differently. You know, the first few years of my son's life, there's so many times that, that I just put work in front of that and work in front of family and just to grind it out. And it never seemed like it was enough. Right. And it never, it, you know, for me, I'm writing a book called Hill the Hustle and it should be published this year, but it's my definition of hustle is the push force pull drag energy to achieve an outcome, not aligned work. Not, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't just mean hard work to me. It means very imbalanced pushing and pulling energy to force something to happen. And that's where I was at. So that's great that you explained that because, uh, you know, there are seasons of hustle, especially when you're building a business as the network marketing and Mm -hmm. you have to get clients per se or attract clients, if you want to call it that. So there are seasons for that. So if you were to explain like when, when somebody is in the seasons of needing to put in all the work, what would be a better approach that you would recommend? Yeah. So when I started to heal the hustle five years ago, for me, it was about really getting clear on my values and prioritizing those because a lot of times, you know, people will say, oh yeah, family first. Right. And then if you look at their action associated with that, it's usually not the case. And so for me, I got very clear on my values. And for me, my priorities are my soul led journey, my connection with soul and source and myself and personal development, self-love, all of that then my family, then my mission and everything else. Right. And so I started to line up my life in that way to where I was prioritizing my spiritual and self-care and self-love journey, prioritizing my family in a bigger and more expansive way. And then coordinating my days with my divine masculine structure, not wounded masculine. Cause I think hustle is wounded masculine. Hustle is for me, that energy is always attached to lack. It's like, 
I need more. I have to prove myself. I have to, you know, what's next, what's next. And so when the divine masculine structure became incorporated of just like knowing the foundation and the structure of my businesses, and then the divine feminine would flow in between that. Right. And so for me, it was really about getting clear on my values and prioritizing that and then lining my life up and my business up to match it. Beautiful. And I think values is such an important question to ask ourselves. I think that's the number one question we should ask ourselves. What do we value? Right. What what really makes us feel joy and fulfillment and whatnot? And so when you yes. get that answer, whatever that may be, uh, let's say, for example, you know, you mentioned family or let's say self-care, like that's a right. strong value for you. How do you help people balance that with the hustle? And when I say right. with the hustle, meaning the, the succeeding in your pursuit. Right. So the women that I work with in particular, my clients, it's my, the women I work with are very spiritually guided, but also very mission driven. And how I like to see it is that the woman that you are embodying, who the, the version of you that you are embodying benefits your mission, benefits your business. And if you're out of alignment in these other areas, if your family life is a mess, if you have no spiritual connection or guidance or connection to self, right, and you're not taking care of yourself, then your business is going to be a mess, right? There's going to be things and pieces of you. And so it's really prioritizing those things, following through, but also being the woman that's leading the mission and embodying that. If you have this vision to be this world leader impact of, you know, whatever it is you're doing and make a big impact in the world, what's that ideal version of that woman look like? How does she talk? How does she walk? How does she take action? How does she prioritize? How does she schedule her day? How does she show up on a podcast? How does she meet with clients? And really allowing yourself to embody the woman that's leading that business and that mission. And for me, honestly, you know, I don't ever use the word hustle. And as far as like what I do, I think it's taking the aligned action to, to achieve whatever it is you want to achieve. Right. Because I believe in mind, body, soul, business alignment. And I think that you can have harmony. I don't believe in balance, but I think you can have harmony between all of those things. And so really leaning into who are you showing up as and in those seasons where say that you've got precision focus, you know, you're writing a book, you want to grow your company 10 times or whatever it is, you can dedicate a huge amount of time to that. But it's it's at, it's not at the expense of other things, because I always say when you get on your deathbed, I like to think about death a lot. It sounds kind of morbid, but I feel like I think about death in a way that like makes me live more. Right. But if you're on your deathbed, if you think, OK, if I'm dying tomorrow, will I be proud of how I led my life? Will I be proud of the woman I was in business? Well, you're never going to go, man, I wish I would have worked five more hours that week. I wish I would have made $100,000 more. None of that is going to be on your mind. You're going to say, I wish I would have embodied and been myself and really followed my joy and followed, you know, that spark of life. I wish I would have spent more time with my family. I wish I would have taken more care, better care of myself. And so you've got to look at those things and go, okay, am I going to be proud of what I'm building? Because I want to help women build sustainable success with a calm central nervous system. And when you're in that hustle, that lack, that force, force, force energy, your central nervous system's jacked up <laughs> and you're not really building things that are sustainable. So when you stay in alignment, then you can build that sustainable success that you can be proud of. So true and so key, that whole world word sustainable, because as we know, when you're, when you're going, 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 going and doing all the things, that is not sustainable unless you're like, I mean, you men do it better than women because I think right. the, the true essence of a woman is that feminine aspect and that feminine aspect, mm -hmm. that feminine essence of who we are isn't right. in the doing, it's in the being. So mm -hmm. that's very easy for women to get burnt out. I know myself that is completely the person I am sometimes when I'm doing all the things I have to be yeah. mindful of taking care of myself, doing the things that fill up my cup. Otherwise it's not mm -hmm. sustainable. And exactly. so w if you could kind of tell us like when you made the shift yourself, what did that look like? What did you start to like walk us through maybe a normal day where you yeah. and at this point where you already a seven figure earner, I believe you said you were. So yes. what did a day look like that when you made that shift? Right. Yeah. So I completely changed 
so much of how I lived my life and how I structured my days, but also like my businesses too. Like I, I really sat my network marketing business um, to the side and just let it kind of do its thing um, for a while because I knew that I couldn't keep going at that pace. And there was so much lack energy attached to that business for me that I had to like really step back and kind of let it do what it was going to do, whether it deconstructed a little bit or whatever, and trust that like that was it. And then stepped back into, you know, coaching and leading women in other ways so that I could really feel aligned myself. So my business structures change, but how I led my days. So something that has always been really important to me, especially over the last five years is how I start my mornings. And I truly believe the energy you're in in the morning sets the tone for your whole day. And so I really take an hour or two every single morning before my son wakes up and really take the time to set sacred space and to get in a vibration that I want to function in through the day to really embody the woman that's going to lead the mission, lead the family, you know, lead with my husband, of course in this, in this container of life. And so my mornings are really sacred and they change, right? Because I'm not type A anymore. So I'm not like, okay, I do this and this and this and this and this. It's like, I let myself have the freedom to do whatever it is in that morning, whether it's meditate, a somatic practice, you know, doing some kind of journaling, whatever it is, but I allow myself just the space to breathe instead of just jumping up and going in the day. And that's how, that's how I really get into an alignment. And then I always throughout each day, I never schedule things like back to back to back to back. If I can help it, I always give myself 30 minutes to an hour in between each, you know, interview or teaching or client call or whatever it is so that I have space to just come back to my body, call all my power back and really slow down. I think the hardest thing for high achieving women when they start to heal the hustle, and this is what I walk a lot of my clients through is the slowing down. Because like you said earlier, the doing honestly is so easy. I could do, 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 do all day and be fine, you know, quote unquote, fine. Yeah. But it's the being that's the challenging thing. It's the, it's the actually sitting with yourself. It's actually getting to know yourself in the stillness and slowing down, knowing that if you slow down and take care of yourself in those pockets of time, that you're actually going to be more well equipped with the energy that you bring to your next task. And so, and you're going to be able to accomplish a lot more in a smaller amount of time because you're going to be renewed and refreshed. A hundred percent. I think that's so true. I'm, I'm listening to so many other uh, female leaders in this space, in the coaching space that talk more about in that stillness, in the flow is where you have the ability to be more creative or more powerful to impact others in the coaching business or whatnot. So yeah. they, we're, we're learning as w so many women shifted into the entrepreneur space. Of course, yeah. it's been around for a long time, but we're learning like that all the doing is not going to serve especially women, I think, because that's just not our natural essence of who we are. But right. uh, the other thing I was going to ask, uh, I just blanked out for a second. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what was I going to say? Goodness. Um, oh, yes. Sorry. You were talking about earlier, I think this is a good point, is a lot of women find and by the way, I'm speaking to men too. We find validation in the doing, right? We we seek right. like approval through I accomplished this and we want to move to the next thing, to check off the next goal and whatnot. Mm -hmm. What would you say to those that tend to do that? Like if they were to turn the mirror on themselves and they're like, actually, you know, that's kind of the truth. How would yeah. you help guide people get out of that uh, fixation of needing that external approve? I was going to say approviation. That's not a word. Validation. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Let's make it work. Um, yeah. So again, a lot of the work I do in my mission is leading women back to their power and sovereignty and their truth. Right. And when you're in your sovereignty, when you're in standing in your own power and your own truth, it doesn't matter what the external world thinks about you. It doesn't matter what your neighbor or your anybody thinks about you because you're so knowing in yourself. And a lot of the work I do in the in the alchemy side of things is we start to really look at the programs that are running because we're not like this for a re like we're not like this for no reason. There's a reason that, you know, we think that we have to work ourselves to death to make money or to be successful. We were, we were shown that as at a young age, whether it was from our own family or from people on TV, you know, we were shown all of these programs that then 
came into us and then and we started to mimic that right and so we have to look at those things and then start to dissect and decode those and go okay this is mine this isn't mine this is mine this isn't mine and you have to really again do the work on the, and for me it's the spiritual work of coming back and going okay what is my truth what do i truly believe and is there evidence of what I believe out there? And sometimes you have to have faith, right? Like faith is, you know, believing without evidence, you know, because when I started to make the shift five years ago, at least in my circle and my community, I didn't have evidence that I could actually slow down and prioritize my inner work and still be successful and still grow thriving businesses. And so I just knew though, in my heart and soul that that was what I had to do because I was killing myself. You know, I was literally on a path to, and I say that literally I was killing myself. You know, I was drinking too much, had that neurological Lyme disease. I was like rock bottom. And so for me, it was that turning point of going, okay, what does echo want? Like who, who am I really? And can I learn to go on a deep self exploration of loving myself and doing the money mindset work to realize that I am not the money in the bank. I am not the millions of dollars. That doesn't make me who I am. That amplifies my mission. It amplifies how I show up in the world, but it's not who I am. And so really that self-discovery and that spiritual journey of like discovering who you are and what your truth is and what really resonates and fills in alignment with you is going to be the first steps in, in dissecting all of that and filtering through what's yours and what's not yours. Yeah. And if you were to walk somebody through, like if you were to say three things right now, somebody should check in with and really check in with their soul and what's in alignment for them, what would be like the three initial things? We already talked about values is very important, but what would what would you say is like the first step? Because I, I think so many people, anybody that press play on this is really mm -hmm. obviously seeking those answers and wondering what's a better approach. Yeah. Yeah. So the first thing that I would ask is, what do you really want? Because a lot of times people will say, well, I want success or I want this, but what's underneath that? You want to feel freedom. You want to feel love. Do you want to feel whatever it is? And then you start to peel back. A lot of it for me is decoding. It's like peeling back that. Okay. Well, what does freedom mean to you? What does love feel like to you? And then we go into the soul work. And a lot of my work is like alchemy and, and really dissecting energetically. But we look at, okay, well, how can we start to infuse that for ourselves? How can we care for ourselves in a way that makes us feel that way? How can we set up our days in a way that make us feel free? You know, you want freedom. Okay, cool. I get it. But how can you start to implement those energies into your life every single day to move the needle forward so that you feel that? Because a lot of times we want success to feel something. And so you've got to start dissecting what it is success means to you and what that means at layer after layer after layer until you get to that root cause. And then you can start to take action to give yourself that because everything we're seeking from the external world is just what we're missing for ourselves. And so that's like the biggest premise for that. And then it is like setting up your days for success going, okay, well, if I desire freedom, then I don't need to be booking out my day from 9am to 5pm with no stops. That's not freedom, right? We're not saying freedom after 5pm. You want a sense of feeling like, yes, you're accomplishing things and you're, you're creating these things, but you also have freedom to do what you want or to take care of yourself or whatever it is. So really just decoding all of that is going to set you up for that next space. And honestly, the self-discovery is everything because I truly feel that most people, men and women don't know who they are and they're just running off of what they've been told to be their whole life. And they're wondering why, why they're not happy or why they're not being successful or why they're not making money. And it's like, well, are you doing what's true to you? I always use this analogy, you know, my Nana growing up, she always had a garden and I always thought it was so cool. I was like, Oh my gosh, like I can't wait till I have a garden one day. Cause it's like the woman thing to do, you know, like that's what women do. And I nurture and da da da. I got a garden and I hated it. I was like, okay, I love <laughs> fresh organic food. 
but I don't like having to be responsible for this extra thing and like tending to it in that way and all of those kind of things. I was like, so I will just pay somebody that does, you know, the fresh organic stuff and, and do it that way. But I was programmed thinking that's what a woman does. She has a garden. She tends to it. She does this and that makes her more of a woman and more of a nurturer and more of a care. But really, that was just a program that I picked up. Right. Yeah. And it's the same with the programs from, you know, People, you know, our parents growing up, money doesn't grow on trees. Like you have to work really hard. You know, you'll sleep when you're dead, all of these kind of things. And it's like, wait, do I really believe that? Or do not only do I believe it, do I want that? Do I want that to be my story? And you have to ask yourself these deep, deep questions. And it's all about like filtering out what's yours, what's not yours and coming back to your truth because your truth is going to look different than a lot of people, especially in the way of the world right now. And you have yeah. to trust that. Yeah. And I think that's so true. It's it's almost like trying it on because obviously, mm -hmm. like you said, you wanted to start a garden, then you tried it and you're like, actually, mm -hmm. no, <laughs> you're like, this yeah. isn't working for Never me. This is, yeah. So, I mean, I think sometimes if something, if you're curious about something, maybe try it on and then see yeah. from your experience, oh, this doesn't feel exactly in alignment with who I am yeah. or what I love. Exactly. And I think that's, yeah. I think that's great to be curious. If, if it is something mm -hmm. that's like, okay, this is something I always wanted to do. Yeah. Like some Absolutely. people, you know, the whole network marketing thing, for example, um, even network marketers, they're like, yeah, this is something I never wanted to do, but they're like a top, you know, right. figure earner, but it, they yeah. never went into it with the intention to continue with it, but it just flowed kind of naturally and they were good at mm -hmm. it. So I think mm -hmm. it's like trying something on, maybe just be more curious of where it could lead if maybe it's for you, maybe it's not. <laughs> Absolutely. And don't get stuck in just doing it just because you think, and I, I totally agree with that. Try it on, see if it works for you. It's like in the coaching industry, right? It's like your coach or your mentor can tell you how they do it, but you've got to see if that feel, feels good to you or in alignment. And if it doesn't, don't keep doing it just because you see it reaping success for other people. You know, like you've got to, you can't for it's that forcing energy. Well, I've got to do this because she does this and she's a seven figure earner. It's like, no, you don't. If it feels like crap to you, and maybe you want to do it, but you don't, you hire somebody else to do it for you. Like there's ways to, you know, get things done without you actually being the one to do them too. Yeah. And I think also it's uh, really being authentic and true to what, again, are you in alignment with? Like I always say when I, cause I, uh, there's things I use every day, meaning skincare or health mm -hmm. supplements or whatnot, but only the things that I love and use every day will I actually share with others and become affiliate of or, or whatever it may be because I'm like, it's easy for me because it's something mm -hmm. I love. So it's like, oh, I love mm -hmm. this. Here, buy it. <laughs> if you yeah. want, you know, it's like, it's yeah. very easy when it's in alignment with you and then it just flows naturally. So exactly. Yeah. In mm -hmm. all the things you teach today and everything you're talking about, do you find you still struggle in any of these things that you're talking about? Because I feel like we always teach the things that we once struggled in when we yeah. find the solution. But yet I do believe that again, we're human. So we're not going to be perfect always. So mm -hmm. is there something you still struggle in? That's a good question. I I don't feel that I struggle in, in these areas anymore, but I do feel that I'm always open to like fine tuning and to really, I'm always doing like self and life and business audits and making sure that like everything I'm doing, everything I'm saying yes to is in alignment. I'm always, ve I'm very self-led. So I'm like always checking myself, so to speak. And if there's something where I'm like, eh, I kind of like wobbled on this this week, I'm going to fine tune it. Or this could be better. This could be more in alignment. This could be a higher frequency. So let's fine tune that. Um, I really check in with myself though. Like if I start to feel that like I'm getting stressed or like, frantic about something in business or whether it's a launch or, you know, opening up enrollment for something. It's like, okay, I take a deep breath. I get myself in check. I step back and then I come back to it with a clear head. You know, I don't let myself spiral out like I used to. Beautiful. Yeah. I, I think that's so great. And, uh, I'm like losing my train of thought so often. <laughs> I, I had a, a really powerful interview before this and I was like, it was like one of those emotional interviews. And so mm -hmm. I think that like just took it all out of me. But anyways, uh, 
I was going to say, oh, what I always like to say is, as you were saying, you always check in with yourself. And I always say, like, be very conscious with my yeses and conscious with my noes. Because, yes. of course, what you say yes to, you'll say no to something else. And so I think that's mm -hmm. when you become so self-aware. Self-awareness is key. Then you're able to really be able to be in alignment with everything you say yes or no to. And so yeah. how do you, well, we kind of probably touched on this, but I, as I mentioned, I think self-awareness is key. So yeah. do you have like journaling prompts that you suggest these women that you lead? You know, I used to, I used to be big on giving journaling prompts. And over the last few years, I do what I call soul guided writing. And I will honestly prompt myself, like whatever's present for me in that moment, whatever I'm struggling with or whatever I'm having, you know, a difficult time with or whatever I'm celebrating, whatever it is. And I just ask a question. And then I usually like to go into some point maybe five, 10, 20 minute meditation and then as soon as I come out in that bliss state, I just write and I let my soul write for me. I let whatever channels through come through and trust whatever comes through. I, I try not to force, you know, um, the information to come through me anymore. Um, so journaling prompts are just prompted by whatever's present for me in that moment so that it can be just like the purest information that comes through. Beautiful. Yeah. I love yeah. that actually. So, be so beautiful. I, Let's talk about your book that's coming out. So talking about Heal the Hustle, as we're talking about right now, what what should we be excited and expecting in this book to come? What what's, uh, what's some tangible tools that you are sharing that we could possibly get a little peek into? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited about this book. I'm so excited for just I feel that it's going to be a foundational piece for like this next level in my business and my, the mission that I'm on. And a lot of it is going to be a lot of what we talked about expanded upon, but it's, I'm going to teach women how to infuse, especially high achieving women, because again, the doing's easy. It's so easy for us. It's so easy and so second nature. And a lot of times I hear, you know, I don't have time to slow down. I don't have time to meditate. I don't have time for this or for that or self care, or get a massage or whatever. And I always say, if you don't have time for your spiritual journey, or your self care journey, then there's things on your plate that have to go, you know? And so the slowing down, I have a process that I teach and I've taught for a few years and it's mindful transition meditations and MTM for short. And what it is, is it's a way to infuse stillness and coming back to yourself and your day. So how I explain it is, a lot of times we'll get up in the morning, we go, we go to one task, to the next task, to the next task, to the next task. And we're dragging that energy through our entire day. And then we get to the end of our day and we, un we wonder why we're exhausted, why we don't have a sex drive, whatever it is, like we're like, ex you know, out of it. And so with MTMs, it's a process that I teach where for 60 seconds in between each task, you close your eyes and you take deep breaths. And you call all your power back to you. And this, it, it seems like a lot when I explain it because it's like, okay, after this podcast interview, I'm going to sit here for 60 seconds, close my eyes, breathe, do all that before I go in and start a load of laundry. When I'm done with the laundry, I'm going to close my eyes for 60 seconds, breathe, call my power back to me, right? Before I go, you know, if I go to the grocery store, get in my car, drive to the grocery store, before I get out and go to the grocery store, call my power back. Cause what happens is, is say you get in the, get in the car, you go to the grocery store, somebody cuts you off, flips you off, whatever. And your, your central nervous system goes ah, and freaks out. And then you get out of your car and you take all that energy into the grocery store. And then you're a magnet and a vibration for those lower frequencies. So then you get a rude cashier, you get somebody that hits your car, you take all that, you get in your car, you drive home, somebody else flips you off. Then you get in your garage, you come in and you see your kids and they they piss you off. Or your spouse pisses you off because you're in that vibration to be pissed off. But if we take the 60 seconds after the car ride to breathe before we go into the grocery store, we get out of the grocery store, we breathe, we come back, we get still in our body. Then when we get in the garage, we breathe, we come back to our body, call all our power back. Then we greet our children and our spouse with open arms, open heart, open love. And so this process, you know, say that you have 30 to 60 tasks in a day, that's 30 to 60 minutes that you gave yourself of coming back to yourself, coming back to your power in the stillness. And that's a great practice for people that say they don't have time for meditation. Mm. Now it's not pure meditation, but meditation is just quieting the mind. It's coming back to 
to the truth and the heart and the soul, right? So MTNs is a is an incredible way to start to infuse the stillness into your day. And to and for me it is, it's consciously, you know, asking my guides, source, whatever, to call back my power, to bring all my vibration back to me so that it's not just like leaking out everywhere. <laughs> That is so powerful. I love that. I think if people just implement that into their days, and like you said, it sounds like a lot, like 60 seconds and all these right. transitions per se, but I could see mm -hmm. that being so powerful and useful. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I want to try that myself because yeah, I think that, like you said, like if something triggers you and then you don't really like release it, let it go, then you're yeah. going to move that into the next and the next and next and it just escalates. So Oh, it just builds up. So, so good. I love that. Well, uh, let's see what – I know you have a lot of offerings. I was checking out your website. You have a beautiful website, lots of stuff. And so uh, what is something you would want to mention maybe for anybody listening to check out to learn more about you and maybe go into anything you offer today? Yeah, absolutely. So Soul Up, which is the movement that I created over three years ago, is this, it's like the foundation of all of my work. It's the, it's the meat and potatoes, if you will, of like the structure of how I live my life, the spiritual journey I've been on, how I attain mind, body, soul, business alignment. And it's a sacred community of beautiful women from all over the world that come together to support each other, love on each other. It's also where I recently, a few months ago, brought all my programs and masterclasses into Soul Up. So I don't actually right now offer any public programs. They're all a part of the Soul Up membership. And so Soul Up is just a beautiful, sacred space where I guide women back to their power and sovereignty, live coaching, monthly themes, meditations, all of that support and mentorship in that community. And for your listeners, they can use podcast 10 as a code as well to get 10% off. So thank you for that. I'll definitely yeah. plug everything in the show notes. Okay. So Beautiful. lots of goodness you just shared. Like I said, that one thing you shared about the MTM. Is that what it's called? Yes. MTM. Yes. That's so powerful. If anybody implements that into your life, I'm sure you could see a shift immediately. Yes. I could I could just yes. imagine it because I know how it is when you just like build, 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 and it's just like mm -hmm. phew, you explode on your Yeah, and I always <laughs> encourage people to commit to 30 days. Like and and find a partner, find a girlfriend that you can do it with where y'all can hold each other accountable, right? Or tell your spouse or tell your kids. But I, I notice a huge shift after day 10. People, it actually starts to click, you know, and they start to see the big difference, but like a 30 day commitment to that. And I can guarantee that you'll definitely raise your frequency. <laughs> Beautiful. So we have a task to all the listeners go try that for yes. 30 days. Perfect. Yes. All right. So in closure, I always ask my guests a question and that is mm -hmm. if you were to share a piece of wisdom, a life lesson that you've learned on your journey, what would that piece of wisdom be that you would leave us with today? Hmm. <sighs> that you get to have it all and be it all without doing it all alone. That you get to live the life of your dreams, that you get to create the life of your dreams, the relationships of your dreams, but you don't have to bear the weight of doing it all alone. I think it's important, especially on the journey of healing the hustle and really coming back to your truth that you learn to ask for support and guidance and mentorship along the way so that you have that support system to hold you in your creations. So beautiful. Thank you. I love that. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you for crystallizing you. that. That was amazing. All right, Aww. everybody, where can we uh, find you on Instagram or all the things? Yep. I'm, I'm mainly on Instagram and it is simple. It's at Echo Summer Hill. So that's where I hang out the most. And tell us a little story about your your name. Is there a story behind it? Yeah, yeah there is actually. People always ask, is that your real name? <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, so Echo is my first name, obviously, and it is the name. I'm a 16th Cherokee and it's the name of a Cherokee chief's daughter. So an Indian princess. And so my great, great grandmother, her name was Bird. And then her dad was a chief and had a daughter named Echo. And so, so that's- yeah. And then summer is my dad's favorite time of the year. So that was easy. And I'm married a hill. So it was just like the icing on the cake, you know, but I joke around and I say, my parents just did a lot of drugs. So <laughs> <laughs> You're like, that sounds good. Check. Okay. No, yeah. but that's, I love that story. Thank you for Thank sharing you. that. 
Echo, it's thank been you. such an honor. And just thank you for sharing your light and, and all that you are helping women in today. I think it's really necessary today. It's something that I myself, like I'm, I'm really good at, do, as you said, it's really easy to do all the things and, yeah. and, you know, hustle your way through it all. But then we do burn out. And I think it's really important. We return back home to ourselves and, and, mm -hmm. And, and work from a space that's really, I mean, I'm all about alignment. Alignment is my word, if you want to say that just carries through mm -hmm. every year. But, you know, when we get back to feeling at home with who we are and what we're doing and making an impact through that, you know, yes. because when we're doing all the things, it's so easy to get detached from per se, the vision of it all yes. and the meaning yes. and the essence of why we're doing it. So yes. yeah, we have to return, like take those breaths. <laughs> yes. So, Being purpose driven, purpose, purpose -driven. and mission driven. A hundred percent. It's been such an honor. I so appreciate you. you. You are stunning, by the way. If you're watching this on YouTube, <sighs> she's stunning. And I love that purple you. on you. So, oh, so thank you. It's so thank beautiful. You. I love thank it. Thank you so much. It was an honor speaking to you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you.